Kaiser, thanks very much for your time. We're sure. in coming to the end of 2018, entering 2019. It's been a tumultuous year in some ways, a, a, a turning point year from probably a lost decade for the metals and engineering sector. How would you reflect on 2018? Well, Terence, you're absolutely right. Uh, regrettably, we've just come out of what has been a lost decade, not only for the metals and engineering sector, but for the country as a whole. Uh, regrettably, from 2008 onwards, up until where we are now, uh, we've gone almost backwards. The economy has suffered very, very badly. Uh, we have not had the kind of political stewardship that has inspired confidence domestically and internationally. We stand in 2018 on the edge of what looks like a, uh, a turnaround. And indeed, everything that has been done in the, since, since the election of Cyril Ramaphosa has indicated that uh, there's a lot that is positive that is happening. Things have not happened at the pace that we would have wanted them to happen for a whole host of reasons. But certainly, as we come to the end of 2018, things are looking a lot more positive, even though we've just come out of a recession. And the fortunes of metals and engineering in South Africa historically have been very much aligned to the resources, mineral and resources complex, but increasingly also the automotive industry and construction. All those sectors have been faced with a lot of uh, policy uncertainty and some tumult over the last few years. Are you seeing green shoots in those areas? Yes, we are seeing green shoots uh, in those areas, and I'll just talk about them now. But it is absolutely true that you cannot have a thriving metals and engineering sector when mining is bleeding, when auto manufacturing is not doing as well as it could, but especially when construction is not doing well. The metals and engineering sector is a supplier to four sectors. The, its products are supplied to mining. It produces for construction and also produces for the auto manufacturing sector. And some of its pro uh, co uh, production is consumed within the sector itself. And so the, to the extent that there was this long dragging out controversy and uncertainty uh, that affected the mining sector because of, of the, 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 the mining charter, to the extent that there was very little investment in, in, in mining taking place uh, because there wasn't the political certainty that was spoken about, we, we've been affected. Uh, m construction today is certainly nowhere near where it was in the run-up to 2008. In fact, it's, it's, it's construction companies and they're, they're, they're among our members. Metals and engineering is very broad, so the big construction companies are members of some of our member associations. They're, they're struggling very badly. And when construction is, is struggling, the metals and engineering sector suffers. So to the extent that uh, there has continued to be in, uh, incentivization of auto manufacturing in South Africa by the government, there has been, that, that, that sector has been cushioned somewhat. And, and to an, we have had some benefit of that. But regrettably, uh, the auto manufacturing sector that has been so generously, generously uh, uh, subsidized by government has not sourced to the extent it should domestically from domestic producers, uh, the, compon the components. And so we, we are heartened by the fact that there is now an agreement concluded by the Department of Trade and Industry, the government, and the auto manufacturing sector through the APDP to ensure that there are certain things to which the auto manufacturing sector commits, one of which is that there should be a much higher level of auto, auto component uh, uh, sourcing from, 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 from uh, the local metals and engineering sector. That would, affect, that, that would impact positively on our sector. If there were one <coughs> policy or legislative action you would love to see government take in 2019 that you think could provide a real stimulus to the metals and engineering subsector of manufacturing, what would, your, what would be on your wish list? First one is, we in 2015 we worked with the various stakeholders within the sector, the labor unions, to call for the imposition of tariffs to protect the primary steel producers in the country. We, were, we believe that we're right to be part of that call, and we were grateful that the government responded positively to that. But we supported the call for the imposition of tariffs, believing that a way would be found to protect the downstream fabricators. So we, we would be very, very grateful if in 2019 a way would be found to ensure that that protection offered to the primary steel producers is available throughout the value chain so that the those uh, companies that are metal fabricators that uh, rely on the primary steel producers do not feel they are on the receiving end of the protection that was given to the primary steel producers. So for us, that would be very, very important. The internal environment, you say, is potentially turning positive, but there's some external threats, and I think one that would affect especially manufacturing in South Africa that has a small market here and needs to export. 
is the fact that there is a more uh, hostile trade environment and the talk of trade wars. How significant a factor is this in the life of, of a metals and engineering sector in South Africa? It is a factor. We're part of this, this uh, uh, world and where there is a trade war between two economic superpowers, the USA and China, we, stay, we are affected. Uh, 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 the, the, the rate at which our currency floats is affected and also uh, we, we are affected in very many ways because we sell to, uh, 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 to, to, to those countries. But for us in this sector we have noticed over the past few years that our, there has been a move away from those big, especially, especially the US and, and Europe, uh, uh, as, as export markets. The biggest market by far, and it keeps growing, is Africa because there is a significant infrastructure development lag on the African continent. In metals and engineering sector, we've seen the African, uh, the African, African market, especially SADC, growing and growing. So we believe that it is important for our companies uh, in the sector to ensure that they invest in the latest technology possible, that they improve their levels of, prof of, of, competi uh, of productivity, and they are much more competitive so that they can compete against other international producers on the African continent and elsewhere in the world. For CIFSA in 2019, <clears throat> because you don't have direct wage negotiations, what would you say are your top priorities for the year ahead? For CIFSA in 2019, thankfully we, we don't have wage negotiations, but we do in 2020. And so it becomes important to use 2019 to ensure that we uh, manage the relations between ourselves and labor. More importantly, that uh, we share with the information that, that's available uh, between, us, uh, uh, between us on the economy. When we produce on an annual basis the very comprehensive and authoritative state of the metals and engineering sector report, we make that it's, it's sold, but we make it available to all the unions free of charge because we want to make sure that the information that we have on how the sector is performing and how we anticipate it to perform uh, uh, in, in the forthcoming year or years, that information is available to them. But also, we are not adversaries. We're not enemies. That's always been our philosophy. We may, from time to time, hold different views. We may disagree when it comes to uh, whatever the demands are on the table or what, uh, 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 when it comes to wages. But we believe fundamentally that labor and business are partners, just as we believe the government is, is a partner. So 2019 for us is a year in which we need also to continue to build and strengthen the relationship with labor. Because when the relationship is solid, and when you, when you enter the negotiation room in 2020, uh, you, you are then not distracted by, by peripheral issues uh, because the relationship is solid, just focusing on the issues at hand. But we certainly would hope that the government would move speedily to ensure that uh, manufacturing is looked after in 2019 uh, because we are part of manufacturing. When that is done, we, we certainly would benefit. And we would hope that there would be extra emphasis on the strategic role of the metals and engineering sector uh, play, uh, uh, by, by, by government through trade and industry and any other relevant government department. And finally, you talk about partnership collaboration being more of a theme now since we've had a change in uh, administration. What role can CIFSA and its members play in sort of consolidating the turnaround and then providing the impetus for growth and investment? And what role do you see some of your platforms, for instance, like the Metals in Dharma, playing in that? You know, Terence, we uh, believe that it is absolutely crucial for all relevant stakeholders always to work together. That is the reason we created the Southern African Metals and Engineering in Dharma to offer an opportunity for business, labor, government, and po policymakers to come together and talk about issues that are of direct interest to the metals and engineering sector, to look at wh what it is that we need to do jointly to stimulate the metals and engineering sector, to make it, again, uh, 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 competitive and, and, and sustainable in the, in the long term. And so we believe that it is important for our members the companies in the sector to recognize that there are certain things that uh, are not going to go away. There are certain things that they need to embrace. One is South Africa is a country that requires all of us to hold hands and work together. We can no longer uh, uh, pretend that uh, transformation for us is not an imperative. In fact, it becomes a business imperative that unlocks doors or opportunities for you. So it's important for the metals and engineering sector to embrace fully transformation and to leverage it 
for, for, for business purposes. It, became, it becomes important uh, for it, uh, 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 aided by uh, its federation, CIFSA, to ensure that it, it networks with, the, with, with, with government and ensures that its voice is heard and, and that it uh, 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 gets government to better appreciate the, the challenges that, that exist in the subsectors within the metals and engineering sector because it is when government has a better appreciation of what it is that affects the various subsectors. Metal and engineering sector is very, very broad that they might be in a better position to help us solve those challenges together. So we would hope for that in, 20, in 2019. And uh, we, it becomes for us a very important uh, conference because it's the fifth year of the metals and engineering sector. The mining conference, the mining uh, sector has had its conference for years. There has never been, until we introduced this one, a conference that brings stakeholders together to talk about matters peculiar to the metals and engineering sector. And so we, we think that, uh, and, and we have, a, we have a, a, a very, very good program, that it would be important for the relevant stakeholders to use this opportunity to ensure that together they draw attention to what needs to be done to advance this, the interests of the sector.